need your blessings. Pour it out. I need your blessings. Pour it out. I need your blessings. Pour it out. What's going on, YouTube? It's your light skin wonder, Tuskegee 87, aka Joe Daddy. And I'm back in the spot one more time to mark it up and to talk to y'all about the press. If you gather from the title of this video, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to be talking about how to obtain those things in life that just seem to be out of reach, that just seem to be out of grasp. We're going to be talking about pressing toward the mark. All right? So, actually, excuse me, and it's not even about... Uh, you know what's out of reach but it's about obtaining that which you are trying to ascend to expire to so today <clears throat> I'm hopefully going to try to get through this pretty quickly keep it between 10 minutes and I'm try to cut back on the examples but hopefully you are understanding you're going to be tracking with me so today uh, if you are familiar with pressing toward the mark you know it comes from Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 12 through 16 or more specifically it comes from uh, verse 14 but uh, we're going to be covering verses 12 through 16 and I'm just going to be basically laying down a little bit of background on this so again uh, Philippians is a it's more of a letter and it's written by uh, Paul and this was done while he was actually behind prison bars he was writing this letter to a group of um, a group of Philippians that were his very close intimate friends now we all know Paul is you know he was the big dog he was the man you know he was the he was the man with the bees knees and all these good things uh, we're gonna kinda go into that to kinda show you but uh, at this time Paul is actually behind bars and you know he's writing a humble letter to his friends so it takes on a different uh, feeling uh, so anyway we're gonna dive into this thing uh, chapter 3 and Philippians talks about the goal of life and that's essentially what we're talking about Today, pressing toward the mark, the goal of life. So we're going to start out with verse 13, and uh, we're just going to read the whole thing through. And it says, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward calling in Jesus Christ. Now, some of the versions may say, I press toward the mark. Uh, I trust press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God. Again, this is the New American Standard, but the, uh, the one I quoted was the New King James Version Standard. Anyway, pressing on to uh, verses 15. Uh, so again, it reads, Let us therefore, as many, are, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if anything you have diff or excuse me, and if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. However, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. So, what does all that mean? We're going to break this down bit by bit. And again, I have my notes here to kind of help guide us all the way through that. So, starting off at verse 13. Again, Paul is saying... Um, you know, there's this goal in mind. He knows that there's this goal in mind. God has something special for him. Uh, he knows that the mark is there. But like I used in a previous video, uh, there's a timeline. So what he's saying is that though I know that this thing is here for me, this prize is here for me, I haven't reached that point yet. There are things that I need to do before I get to that point. So again, um, he also reminds us, though, that though I know that I'm going to get it, I know I'm going to receive it, I'm not going to look back to the past and look back to the person that I was. You know, I'm not going to look back as being this, um, you know, being this, basically being a boss, essentially. If we read back in verses uh, 5 through 7, it essentially lays, up, lays out his credentials. And actually, you know what, let's go look at that real quick. Uh, basically, it says, circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a prosecutor of the church. As to righteousness, which is in the law, he was found blameless. But however, these were gain, however, these were gained to me, those things I have counted as a loss for the sake of Christ. Bam, wait, what did you just say right there? Like you just said all of this stuff it doesn't even make sense to me. Again, here's what you need to know. Paul was the man. He was the one. He was a shot caller. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, he had all this stuff. He could do basically anything. Um uh, like, people respected him, people feared him, but you know what? He gave all of that up just 
so that he can be closer with God. He, like we talked about in one of our previous videos about uh, how we think and letting things go so we can retain things, he had to let some of these things go so that he can be closer to God. He didn't need that, uh, he didn't need that status, he didn't need that uh, carnal status because he was getting closer to God. So as he got closer to him, he shed it off some of these things. He shed it off some of these things so he could get higher in God and getting closer to him because let's face it, God doesn't want a whole bunch of mess around him. Uh, so again, he got rid of these things so that he could be uh, closer to God. And if we remember from our previous video, this required a change of mind. So he let go of what he did and he transformed himself. He transformed himself by the renewing of his mind. Again, referencing back to Romans 12, chapter, or Romans 12 verse 2. Uh, so basically, that's what the whole phrase says. He forgot his past so that he can look toward the future. Again, it's like driving a car. Your windscreen is massive, but your rearview mirror is small. Why? Because the past is... Granted, it has some reference, but it's no good to you going forward. You can't go forward looking back or else you're going to crash into something. Anyway, pressing on. Uh, speaking of pressing on, verse 14, I press toward the mark for the goal of the upward calling. We're going to break this down. Uh... What this is basically saying, I, I look at this as a journey. Verse 14, Paul is talking about a journey. And uh, with this particular journey, I have chalked it up to be five different things. So I've chalked this up to be personal, and that is the I part. So I, this means me, nobody else, not your brother, your mother, your sister, father, mother, whoever it is, son, daughter, whatever. This is a personal commitment that you've made to yourself, that you want to be closer to God, that you want to do something more for God, that, um, you know, you're going to leave everything else behind you that detracts you from getting closer to God so that you can press on forward. So again, it's, uh, this thing requires a commitment. Uh, the next thing is a physical thing. So the pressing part. Uh, if you look at pressing, pressing is an action. So um, getting closer to God, receiving that prize that we talked about uh, requires action. Like we mentioned once before, is that um, you can't get something from God unless you put in the work first. You can't get paid until you do the work. Makes sense, right? So again, this requires action, this requires work. It's not going to happen until you do it. And again, going all the way back, this requires a change of mind. This requires a change of heart. You have to put steps forward. A car is not going to move until you start it up, until you put it in gear, and until you press the, uh, the accelerator. If you don't do that, it's not going to happen. Uh, so again, uh, we're going to press down to uh, the second uh, P and again, these are the five P's that I look at it as. Um, this journey is a is precise. So, what do you mean it's precise? I mean, how do we know it's precise? Well, there's a mark we're looking for. So, you are pressing. We are pressing toward a mark. We're pressing toward a goal. There's an end goal in mind. There's some place that we want to be. When you're taking a cross country trip, you have point A and you have point B. Point B is your destination. That's where you're trying to go. And again, you don't deviate or you. You don't go to C, you don't go to D, you're going to B because that's what your mark is. If you're target shooting, your target is at the center of the sheet of paper or is at the center of the bullseye. That's what you're trying to shoot for is that small target area. So again, it's very precise. Uh, and we have to be mindful of that. There's a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a target that we need to hit. Uh, again, moving on, uh, this journey is productive. But why? There's a prize involved. Well, what do you mean? What does prize and productivity have to do with anything? Well, again, if you don't produce anything, or let's say you produce something, but if you don't produce it well, if you don't produce it good, then you won't get rewarded. If you go out and you've been assigned to do a job and you do a terrible job at it, you're not going to get paid because, again, um, you didn't produce what it was that you were supposed to produce. Thus far, your prize has been forfeited for the lack of your good works. Now, how do we know the size of our prize? How do we know that we're going to get rewarded? Well, I encourage you to journey with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. He says that, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And in the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Wait, okay, so what does that mean? I mean, you, how, how does that, 
how does that tell me what my reward is going to be? Well, first of all, it's telling you that you're going to get a reward for doing a good job. I mean, that's a basic principle. Uh, if we look at this, it says, I have fought the fight. But not only did I fight a fight, I fought the good fight. So I did more than just the bare minimum. And I finished the course. That means I didn't halfway do it. I didn't try to take short course or shortcuts rather. I went all the way through from point A to point B without deviating and going everywhere else. And I have completed the task that was laid out before me. And I've kept the faith. I've dated because God has told me, hey, if you do this thing, you're going to be rewarded. So he used faith to do that. And now uh, in the future, that's the key, in the future. So you may not get it right at this minute. You may not get it as soon as you complete the task, but guess what? It's out there for you. You have to be patient. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up on wings. Uh, there's so many verses on here to talk about waiting on God. And again, in the future is what you're having to look for. It's already yours. You really already have it. The thing is, the only thing that you're waiting for is just time to pass. And you have, and that requires patience. But again, if you speak it into existence, you already have it. So uh, that's basically what this is talking about. You have your reward based on the work that you have done. Okay, well... That's great and all, I got a reward, but how big is my reward going to be? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let us venture on to Matthew chapter 16, verses 27. And let's see how big this reward is. Well, in the good word, it says to us, For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And this is in all caps, by the way. And will then recompense every man according to his deeds. Huh, recompense, eh? You mean there's going to be a reward, huh? Oh, so you mean my reward is going to be uh, equal to that to what I've done? Exactly. So the more you do for the Lord, the greater your reward is going to be. So the church I've been going to, Teach All Nations, woo -woo, I mean, it's, it's awesome there. I've been going to this church for about a year now. And I see, I see these individuals here. They are fully committed to God. And they're so fully committed that they have quit their worldly job, the job where you go out and work for the man, and they work solely in the church, and God has taken care of them. Now, you're like, wait, wait a minute. Why would they quit their paying job to go work at church? Churches don't make that much. It's not about how much the church makes. It's not about uh, quitting their job. It's not about money. It's about keeping the faith. They had the faith. They had enough faith to say that, oh, God has called me to work in the church. Well... Uh, you know, God told them, hey, uh, here's this opening. You know, if if you come and work for me full time, I'll make sure that you're taken care of. Now, we know that God uh, rewards exceedingly but abundantly. So not only did God take care of the people who are working full time with him because they trusted him, but they have also had their territory in large. They are blessed. They are very blessed. And why? It's because they're putting in that work for the Lord. They have kept the faith and now their reward is paying off. Again, they put in the work, but they put in the faith and over time it is paid off. God has rewarded them immensely. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. I love how 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 there's a prime example right there in front of me of how keeping the faith uh, is rewarded. So uh, again, I can tell you from a fact from seeing it myself how keeping the faith and how doing good deeds and how many deeds or how good your deeds are rewards you. Um, so again, I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's like, I, I wish you all could see it. I wish you all could just feel it and understand it like I do because, I mean, this thing's amazing. It's, God is good. God is outstanding. Anyway, pressing on, uh, the last P uh, of this journey, this journey is prestigious. Well, what do you mean it's prestigious? How do we know it's prestigious? Well, uh, as it says, uh, we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. So uh, this is a high calling. This is prestigious. There is authority associated with that. God has called you to do this specific thing. He, he Out of all the six billion plus people in out the entire earth, God could have called anybody to do what it is that God, that he is giving you the ability and calling to do. Right? But no, he chose you. He chose you to do this thing. That's what makes it prestigious. Well, what do you mean? I mean, I still don't get how that's prestigious. Okay, now let's backtrack. God created the heavens and the earth. He created you. He created the universe. He created everything that we know, the whole world around us. 
that's some pretty that's some pretty big power and now a lot of people they tend to want to get close to people who have all this power because it makes them feel special because they think people with all this power are something special they're prestigious whatever same thing that's why this calling is so so prestigious because he could have chose anyone. He could have just created someone to fill that role. But no, he already created someone. He created you to do what it is that you're supposed to do. Whatever your passion is, whatever your talent is, God has given you that gift so that you can go forth and produce from here. And I tell you, I oh my goodness, once you start using that gift for his glory, you're going to be so fulfilled. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you. Oh, I love, I love working on cars, right? Until I started working on the vehicles at at my church, I didn't really. I, I got a little bit of fulfillment, but until I until I started using that love and that gift and that talent for God's glory, you know, I didn't really. I didn't. I didn't get as good of a feeling as I do now. It is so amazing how good it feels to work for the Lord. And now some of you all may be looking at this thinking I'm crazy or thinking Christianity is a cult or whatever, but. Until you see it with your own eyes and until you do it yourself, you're not going to understand. You're not going to understand. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you all, help you all understand that it is great to serve the Lord. Oh, my gosh. The God I serve is amazing. The God I serve is, oh, oh I just can't even explain it in words. He's amazing. He's amazing. Anyway, got to press on the move. Verse 15 is the last verse or second to last verse we're going to do. Uh, basically, uh, whatever is perfect, let us have these attitudes of this thing. Essentially what it's talking about, we have to have the right attitude. We have to have the right mindset to make sure that we are uh, producing good quality work. Because without that mindset, we're not going to complete that course. We're not going to fight the good fight because we don't have that mindset to say that, yes, we're going to do it well. But not only well, we're going to do it above and beyond the call. So we're going to do better than we can do ourselves. Uh, so again, I mean, we have to have right attitude. As a man thinker, so he is. If you think you're going to fail at this task, you're going to fail at it. If you think you're going to uh, be victorious in it, you're going to be victorious in it. Again, it's all in the way that you think. Um, God will let you know whether or not your mind is in the right place and he'll help you renew it. Essentially, that's kind of breaking down the rest of uh, verse 15. So you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Again, God's going to help you. And if you fall off to the wayside because we're all human, God's going to help you out with that. You just have to take the step to renew yourself, to change your frame of mind so that you can change your spirit, your soul, and your body so that you can go forth and conquer like you're supposed to do. Anyway, uh, last but not least in this particular verse, everything is in perfection. Now, uh, we don't mean perfection in the physical, but more or less uh, obtained through obedience to Christ. Uh, as long as you are keeping his commandments and are trying to follow him, you will be in perfection as far as obedience goes. Now, again, we're not going to be able to follow it to the letter, but the simple fact that we've given our life and have dedicated ourselves to doing uh, the best we can through God uh, for God, you can't ask for anything else better. I mean, you can't ask for it anything better or anything else better. So anyway, moving on to verse 16. Uh, basically, it's kind of like a decision factor. Basically, what this is telling us is that you can choose to press on or remain stagnant where you are. Again, that's what it means by, however, let us keep living the same standard to which we have attained. That's essentially what it means. He talks about all these different things. So um, you can't you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting to get to a different location. Uh, if you 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 can't be complacent in this. Uh, I I read that and I think of reaching to the next level. If there is a next level, then where you're at right now is not the level. It's kind of like the movie Rio. Uh, when they're dancing in the streets and uh, the uh, the uh, I forget the parrot is trying to. Uh, talk to the little girl or whatnot or to the other parrot girl I forget how the whole thing goes but one of the birds said hey baby this ain't the level the next level is the level and that's kind of funny to me because I mean he's right if there's another level then where you're at right now doesn't matter so anyway uh, that's what I want to leave you with uh, make sure that there is a goal in mind that you have to do. God has put something on your heart. God has given you ability. He's given you a talent. And you must press toward the mark using that gift and ability of talent to produce for him. Because when you produce for him or produce good for him, <coughs> you will get that much closer to the mark that you need to get to. So, uh, again, 
Thank you all for tuning in on this channel. I hope that this information I'm giving to you is beneficial to you. And again, I, I, I hope and pray that you all will take heed to what it is that I am putting out here. Again, these are, this is the word of God. This is the word of Christ. Again, it's not, this isn't me. This isn't what uh, Action Jackson and uh, Tuskegee 87 and Joe Daddy all have in common. This is what comes from the word of God. So again, if you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Again, go forth and prosper and remember to straighten up and fly right. Damn, I'm out. Peace. I'm so wild.